Higgs Boson is asking, does Qatar plan to impose Sharia in FIFA stadiums and probably arrest people who consume alcohol or are caught having premarital sex or gay sex? Will FIFA and its sponsors try to influence Qatar's laws? FIFA has made countries like Brazil and South Africa change its laws before. So by the way, Higgs Boson, thanks for providing a news source for this question. I love it when people do that for context. Um, Okay, so here's the deal. I did some research on this and I didn't, I found a lot of people reporting on it, but not a lot of news sources that I find to be very reputable. Um, what I did find was people talking about how Qatar has failed to very explicitly talk about the safety of LGBTQ fans. Um, they were they use very vague language when asked very specifically about this issue they refuse to use the phrase lgbt um now when it comes to this are they going to impose sharia in fifa stadiums it, think of it this way sharia is a part of the law in qatar so because the stadium is in qatar is under qatari jurisdiction there will be elements of Sharia in the law. It's part of the law of the land. So obviously the law of the land will apply like to this stadium because it's within the country. So it's not like they're imp imposing Sharia on this stadium. It's like, no, it's already a thing everywhere in the country. And so naturally it's going to be here. Um, in terms of with the arrest for premarital sex, my understanding is that in Qatar, premarital sex is punishable by, by up to seven years in jail. Now, I actually, and I think that might be applicable to anyone in the nation because I was getting Qatar and the UAE confused where the UAE, people correct me if I'm wrong, actually has a kind of a different rule set if you're a, a national or if you're a foreigner. If you're a foreigner, you still have to deal with some like Islamic type restrictions, but in general, in general, you, you have way more freedom than an actual Emirati national. So there's like a two-tiered system. And I know that the premarital sex rules for foreigners in the UAE like loosened up because they're trying to liberalize so fast. Um, so I thought that that might be the situation in Qatar, but I haven't actually found anything to support that yet. So to my knowledge, I think this might apply to everyone. I think there's two there's a difference between having the laws and enforcing the laws and if i had to guess and i'm basing it based on nothing other than just a guess is that qatar would not enforce any of these laws because that would be you know suicide reputation wise i mean i shouldn't have said that word youtube doesn't like that but anyways that it would have it would be like qatar is extremely desperate to put it with their prs to show a progressive front to the world. And I don't think like, again, I could be completely wrong about this because I haven't looked at, into it, but I'm just thinking like, they're not going to, they, they they're going to look the other way. I think they're going to look the other way. Like they're going to, well, they, listen, the last listen. thing, the last thing they would want is news coming out of Qatar. Like regardless of people, like the time that they're trying to show the world and that look at how, look at us. The last thing they would want is like, Oh, people got arrested for, consuming alcohol or for sex we were like okay stay away from that country like i don't well, think Armin, that's what they want a few months ago on the news we talked about how there was a woman who was working for the fifa world cup she got r-worded i'm using this word because of youtube i mean r-a-p-e she got r-worded by a colleague and she was going to be prosecuted for premarital sex before the mexican embassy helped her escape the country this is someone who is working for FIFA. Where where is she from? Mexico. She's a Mexican okay. Muslim. Mexican Muslim. So the fact that she was a Muslim had a, had some influence on that, didn't it? Probably. Like they decided, possibly. Yeah. Yeah. Like they decided that they have they own they have they own her. A free <laughs> they have a free hand over her because she's a Muslim. I just think like it's ludicrous. Yeah, I think like the, there's some bigotry also involved. Like, I don't think like they're gonna do that to. I don't think they're gonna do do that during. I mean, they have to be okay. I don't know what they're gonna do, but they have to be insane to do that during the events to anybody. 
You know what I mean? I don't know. Here's the thing. Like so a lot of people are pointing out that like FIFA or the Olympics have basically forced countries to change their laws for the sake of holding an event in their country. This hasn't been the case with Qatar, very noticeably, to my knowledge. Um, and I want to I want to read something that I read. So, quote, the Guardian this week presented the Supreme Committee, the body in charge of organizing the World Cup, with a series of direct questions related to LGBT fans and their concerns, but received no specific answers. The questions include whether LGBT people would be protected by Qatari officials if threatened because of their sexual because of their sexuality, whether articles of the Qatari penal code, including those which outlaw quote, instigating or seducing a male in any way to commit sodomy would be suspended during the tournament, whether fans carrying rainbow flags would be allowed to take them into stadiums, and whether the Supreme Committee would specifically welcome LGBT people as World Cup visitors. The general reply said, everyone will be welcome to Qatar in 2022, regardless of their race, background, religion, gender, sexual orientation, or nationality. We are a relatively conservative society. Relatively conservative. Okay. <laughs> for no, no, example, no, no, are, for example no, no, that's, that's true. Relatively. I mean, they're next, I mean, relative to Iran, relative to Saudi Arabia, right. of, they are very, yeah, they're not as conservative, but yeah, go on. Okay, but here's the thing. We are a relatively conservative society. For example, public displays of affection are not a part of our culture. Lame. Um, we believe in mutual respect. And so whilst everyone is welcome, what we expect in return is for everyone to expect our cultures and traditions. Challenge it. Challenge it. My, okay, I don't know if I should recommend this because people could get in trouble. But if you Serious are, <laughs> how big of a trouble can they get in? Like that Mexican lady was she she was just deported but she did she like was there she any... wasn't deported her government's embassy had to help her freaking escape the country okay if you are an activist and are willing to take risk okay it would be it might be i don't know okay i don't want to recommend anything that gets people in trouble it might be a good idea to challenge the conservatism of qatar by carrying out rainbow flags and kissing your gay lover in the stadium publicly oh my god just just to challenge these norms on an international level get like get fifa involved get like get fifa and qatar like like you could you could be just two individuals that don't have enough like that much power but by doing this in the stadium during these events you're getting the government of qatar and an, an organization as big as FIFA involved into LGBT activism on a, on a platform that is globally visible. So They're going to have to start picking sides real quick. Yeah. So imagine what a great opportunity this is for LGBT activists for to do simple acts that get this will get this much ant attention on a global scale. So I would be very disappointed if no lgbt activists if if there's no nobody is going to take advantage of this opportunity to make this to challenge qatar's conservative rules so anyways like you guys like i mean if you're an lgbt activist think about the people that came before you and the risk that they took you know and the, the prices that they paid okay and that the fact that you're enjoying them, like you're enjoying them like in the United States and UK and Ireland, like, you know, in Canada and people don't have that privilege in Qatar. So you get to go in Qatar and be like, oh, well, we're, not just gonna, we're just not gonna do anything at this time and then go back to your freedom. How about show some appreciation for the people who done this before, for, uh, before you for the rights that you enjoy and maybe try to spread this around the world. Yeah. Okay, so. but also we are not encouraging anyone to do anything that is illegal or unsafe. So, I mean, I am, but it's your choice, right? So again, I would just be disappointed if if nobody takes advantage of this. I'm not saying obviously I'm not I can't I'm not forcing anybody. So I don't know how I could be responsible. I'm just saying, you know, rights come, you know, the defense of rights and getting new rights. Um, comes with cost. So, 
So some people should pay the price. And I don't think the price is that high. Like, okay, you're going to be detained for a while. What's going to happen? It's not. It's Qatar. It's not Saudi Arabia. They're not. It's not Iran. You're not going to get executed. You're not going to get tortured. It's going to be an amazing memory. Like I did I... this. I do. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I am taking a much more cautious position. And uh, I'll just, yeah. I'll we don't know. That. Talk. Do yeah. some research I... before you decide anything. Oy. Don't trust uh... anything. Don't trust anything I say. Talk to a, talk to a lawyer or whatever. <laughs> okay. So Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Abhabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.